Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm gonna to show you what I think is the best way to trim a brisket for barbecue success. I've been getting a lot of questions about how to trim a brisket. So I thought instead of answering a bunch of questions over and over again, I should do a video about how to trim a brisket because I've trimmed briskets in videos in the past as parts of other videos, but I've never done one dedicated to just trimming. Now, trimming a brisket the right way won't guarantee you success with your barbecue, but trimming it in the wrong way will guarantee failure. There are basically three different styles of barbecue when it comes to the mental approach you take to preparing the food. There's competition style barbecue, there is backyard style barbecue, then there's restaurant style barbecue. Competition, you're focused on just that one perfect bite. Uh, restaurant style barbecue, you're focused on consistency and a large volume. And then backyard barbecue, you're focused on making the best meal for you, your family, your friends, for whomever, but the people who are gonna be at your house eating with you. Most of the time, backyard barbecue falls somewhere in the middle between competition style and restaurant style. Because if you think of it as a continuum, competition barbecue, they pull out all the stops to make that one perfect bite. Restaurant style barbecue, they're looking for consistency and to make sure that every slice that comes off that brisket is something that they can sell to customers. And backyard barbecue usually finds its place somewhere in the middle. So let me give you an example. When it comes to rubs, you have competition barbecue where they're adding all kinds of very complex rubs with MSG and you know cayenne or some spice. Um, and then they're saucing things and they're dusting things with rub that they grind up in a coffee grinder. And then you have restaurant style barbecue where it's very simple with rubs. So it's usually salt and pepper or maybe it's Lowry seasoned salt and pepper, but it's, it's very simple in comparison to competition style. Backyard barbecue is usually somewhere in the middle, so people can make their own rubs, they might find a store-bought rub that they really like, but it's not overly complicated. This is one of those things where backyard barbecue isn't somewhere in between the two, but it's kind of its own animal. We're not gonna be covering competition-style trimming just because it's completely different than backyard and restaurant-style barbecue. It's very complicated. If you wanna know exactly how to do it, you can click on the card here. Harry Sue, barbecue champion, he's been on TV. He came over and showed me exactly how he does it. So you get perfect slices and perfect burn ends. It's an entirely different beast, but if you're interested, you can check it out. I'll also put a link in the description for you. But we're gonna focus on backyard, and restaurant. I'm going to show you the variations that I do for both. So one will be what I recommend for most backyard cookers and the other one would be how I would trim a brisket if I'm going to be cooking it on a 500 or a thousand gallon offset. Okay the final things before we get into this. Number one, leave your brisket as cold as possible until you're ready to trim it. You don't want to get it out and let it sit for a long time because then the fat starts to get soft and it's difficult to cut through. Also when it comes to cutting make sure that you have a sharp knife. So this one is pretty sharp, right? You don't have to spend a fortune to get a sharp knife. This is a Mercer boning knife. I think it's six inches long. It's what, 12, 13 bucks on Amazon. If you want one of these, I'll put a link in the description. But I have spent money on fancy looking knives that had Damascus steel and wooden handles. And guess what I never use? Those knives. Guess what I use all the time? This cheap knife, okay? It works extremely well. And if I drop it, I don't care. That was 12 bucks. It wasn't a hundred dollar knife. So. That's what I recommend. So get a nice sharp knife and now let's get the brisket out of the fridge. Let's get it out of the plastic and see what we're working with. Before I move on with the video, I want to take a chance to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And it's America's number one meal kit for very good reason. Number one is it is incredibly convenient. The food just shows up at your door, the recipe is included. If you follow the steps, you're gonna have incredible tasting food at the end. The second reason is there's no waste with a HelloFresh meal kit. For instance, if you need two tablespoons of sour cream, you don't have to go to the store and buy a pound of sour cream and leave it sitting in your refrigerator until it expires and then you have to throw it away. You get exactly what you need all included together. And third and ultimately most important is the food is absolutely delicious. I search out great food all the time and all the meals that I've had from them have been delicious. My family loves them too. It's a great option. The way we use HelloFresh makes our lives so much more convenient. I cook all the time, but a lot of the cooking that I do takes 12, 16 hours to make and my family needs to eat, and there's only so much barbecue that you can eat anyway. So what HelloFresh does for our family is gives us a convenient way to make delicious food that everyone enjoys. And especially with you know, a kid now, it just makes life so much simpler, and we don't have to sacrifice on the quality of food that we eat. 
So go to HelloFresh.com and use code MADSCIENTISTBBQ14 for 14 free meals plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com and use code MADSCIENTISTBBQ14 for 14 free meals plus free shipping. We have our brisket out of the plastic and on the cutting board now so we can get started, but there are a couple important facts that you need to know before we start trimming. First, the side that's facing up right now, I call that the fat side. Why? Because it's covered in a thick layer of fat. The side on the opposite, right here, this side I call the meat side because there's a lot of exposed muscle here. There's of course some fat, but not nearly as much as the other side. So there are two distinct sides to a brisket, the fat side and the meat side. And then there are two distinct ends to a brisket. We have what we call the flat, the thinner part here, and the point, the thicker part. The flat has one muscle and then a layer of fat that sits on top of it. The point over here actually has a muscle, a layer of fat, another muscle, and then another layer of fat. So you need just a really brief bovine anatomy lesson here. So the brisket comes from what would be the chest on a cow, right? So you can think of your own chest, you have two muscles, the pectoralis major, pectoralis minor, but in cattle, it's called the pectoralis superficialis and the pectoralis profundus. That's not super important. Nobody's gonna quiz you on that if you make great barbecue. But what is important is to know that there are two different muscles and so you have to account for them both when trimming. So I'm gonna break down how I trim a brisket step by step. And one thing I've noticed is that pretty much everybody who does a lot of this, they develop their own style. So they might start on the fat side, they might start on the meat side, they might make cuts, you know, wherever. Uh, even the way they open the plastic, I think everybody has developed their own method for. So there are a lot of people who are super, super good. Um, Chud's Barbecue, Brad, he's amazing. He trimmed a brisket blindfolded. One of the most remarkable things I think I've ever seen. Uh, also, Joe Yim, uh, he is just a wizard. I have some footage of kind of a trim off from a barbecue festival, uh, and uh, he, he killed it there. Who's gonna be grinding? I'll make some beef sausage right That's what I make. That's what I'm Joe, it's all about speed. <laughs> so, there are different ways you can go about doing it, but the principles are all the same. So, what I like to do to start off with is first, I trim off a layer from the sides of the brisket. So this long side here and the long side on the opposite end. And so the reason I do that is because I want to, number one, make sure that any oxidized meat or anything like that is exposed. And then also because I think that um, the, the moist meat underneath will help the rub stick to the meat. So if you wanna use a binder or something like that, by all means go for it. I prefer not to, I just find it to be messy. I just don't really like it. Nothing wrong with it, go for it if you want to, but I found that this gives me the best results. Also, I think that trimming off just a very thin layer from the sides helps me out too because that way I can see how thick the fat is on the fat side of the brisket. So it gives me a good idea about how much to trim off. Next, what I do is any bits of fat or meat that are thin and kind of hanging off like this piece right here, it's not kind of integral like one whole piece of the brisket, I trim that off. So this, I just don't think it's gonna do well over a really long cook time. So I just trim this guy off. And then any bits of fat like this that's kind of sticking up, that's gone. Um, any muscle or anything like that, that goes. Next, I start working on trimming off the fat on the fat side here. So I'm looking for about a quarter of an inch. The idea is that by the end of the cook, I want it to render down so that you have this beautiful bark on top of the meat and you kind of have this marriage of rendered fat plus the rub plus the smoke and it makes a delicious bite rather than some thick unrendered fat there. So I want to trim off enough that it will render well, but not so much that it will all disappear and dry out the brisket. 
So the goal is to have about a quarter of an inch on top of the brisket. Now, while you're trimming, I would say try to make long strokes because you want everything to be as even as possible because if you have divots, then liquid is gonna pull in there and it's gonna make uneven bark. It's not gonna look as appetizing. It should still taste really good. It just won't look quite as good. Also, if you get a bald spot while you're trimming, okay, that's okay, it's not the end of the world. It happens all the time. I've trimmed a lot of briskets. I still do that, you know, quite a bit. And I try not to, but one thing you don't wanna do is if you hit a bald spot, don't just keep going because you don't want a bald strip on the brisket. A bald spot, you know, with the smoke and the rub and, you know, 16 hours of cooking, it's gonna cover a lot of that up. But if you have a big strip of bald meat on here, it's really gonna make a difference. You don't wanna do that. So while you're trimming, you can start and then you lift up the fat and you can kind of see where your knife is going. If you see that you've hit meat, you've gone too deep, then stop. I would cut that fat off and then move just past the bald spot and start over. Don't just keep going. So I'm gonna start trimming this and I always start on the fat side because the colder the fat is, the easier it is to trim. So I do that first. All right, so right here, I've been trimming and I can see that I have some meat that's kind of being seen through the fat. So I know that if I go deeper, I'm gonna get a bald spot. So at this point, I'm gonna angle the knife up and make sure I don't go too deep because I don't wanna expose any meat. So I'm gonna keep going until I get about a quarter of an inch everywhere. And then one thing you can do is you can kind of poke the brisket and if the fat feels thick, then you know you can still trim some more. So keep going until you got about a quarter of an inch everywhere. And then we'll go to the next step. Next step, specifically for backyard smokers. Because most backyard smokers don't have the same kind of airflow that tends to dry things out. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out some of this fat right here because I wanna save as much of this meat as possible. So a lot of restaurants, they'll come in here kind of at an angle and just take this whole thing down because what they don't wanna do is have customers pay for a slice of meat, a huge chunk of fat, and then a little bit of meat on the underside. So for consistency and to make sure that every slice is a slice that they can sell, a lot of times that gets trimmed off. But for backyard cookers, you don't have to operate by the same rules. Because if somebody comes over, they're not gonna ask for their money back if they came over to your house for dinner and there's some extra fat on a slice. The meat that's on it is still gonna taste really, really good. All right, so I just kinda dig in here. Just try to follow the muscle down. This band of meat right here isn't very thick, but it's so well marbled that it's gonna make delicious burn ends when you're done with this brisket. So, backyard smokers, keep this thing on. Some people call it the Mohawk. Uh, there are other names for it too, but I've forgotten them, I think. But if you're doing it in your backyard, I'd keep it. Next, we go to the meat side. So, a couple things we're gonna do. We have this big chunk of fat right here. Now, you could try to cave that out. I haven't found a lot of success with that. Usually it just kind of compromises the integrity of the brisket. So what I like to do is come in at an angle and just work my way down through there and just try to make a good even cut. Then we have little pieces of fat here on the muscle. And if you have a sharp knife and you kind of go flat, you can take that off. You can just kind of scrape it off almost. You might get a little bit of the muscle tissue with it, but it's gonna be such a small part in comparison to how thick that muscle is that it's not gonna make any difference. And the reason we take that off isn't because it would be gross or anything, it's just when it renders down, it actually messes up the bark that you worked really hard to create. So we'll take that off, and then any thick seams of fat, we're gonna try to trim down. Any pieces of muscle that kinda got gashed in the processing, we're gonna take that off as well. So we'll clean up this side, and then we're almost done.
I also try to remove any silver skin that's on the bottom just for consistency. Next up we have basically the final step, which is shaping this brisket. And we just follow a simple rule. I call it the rule of thumb. I know it's very creative. But basically any part of the flat that is the thinner part of the brisket that is thinner than my thumb, I cut off. And I don't want any sharp angles or anything like that. So I'll just kind of make gentle cuts. And then when the meat is thicker than my thumb, I stop making those cuts. So let me show you what that looks like. Right here, this is definitely thinner than my thumb. So you can just make gentle cuts. One gentle curves. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's still a little bit thin. So let's do just a shade more. And then I kind of want it to angle in with everything else. I don't want any sharp corners. One last thing for the shaping here. There is a, a corner right here that came bald from the processor. Now there's no fat on top of it to protect it. This is lean meat. This is thin at the end here too. So I'm gonna trim that off, try to round it out and make it nice and even. my opinion is the best way to trim a brisket that you're going to use for backyard cooking. Now, if you're cooking on a big offset, things are going to be a little bit different. And so a lot of restaurant style trimming is going to be based on that. Now, Traeger might use the word convection to sell a lot of their smokers, but really convection truly matters when you have a large offset and there's a huge amount of airflow. It's also in smaller offsets to a lesser degree, but large offsets, just huge volumes of air moving through there. And because of that, and because they want consistency in these slices, restaurants will trim more off. So this guy that's gonna hang out on your backyard offset and make delicious burn ends, most of that guy's going away. Also, a lot of this meat that's probably gonna survive a cook on your backyard offset is gonna have to get trimmed away in the shaping process. So. This is how I like to do it when I cook on my 500 or if I'm using a thousand gallon smoker or something like that. Quick and easy. Take the knife, put it at maybe like a 30 degree angle if I'm guessing, and just kind of trim this thing down because you don't want anything flopping around. So you kind of trim it down. And this part always hurts me because look at that marbling. Can't tell me that wouldn't have been tasty. But for consistency's sake, I totally get it. So they take that and use that for delicious sausages. You could use it for burgers or something like that. If you're only doing one brisket, it's not easy to get a lot of meat out of it, but you may save them for a while and it might be useful to you. And the part underneath is so lean and the convection is a potent force in those big offsets that we're gonna have to shape that out and trim that down some. So I'm gonna get in here and start taking it out. Delicious flavor in this, not a lot of marbling, so it's gonna to have to be used for another purpose. Chili, burgers, sausages, whatever. And now we reshape this guy. And that's basically the only thing I do differently when I trim a brisket for my large offset. And every single slice that comes off this brisket is going to be money. It's not gonna be, ah, oh, will it survive, won't it survive? No, this is take it to the bank everybody's gonna be delicious. So, if you follow these steps, if you make sure you leave enough fat on the top, if you trim off unnecessary things, if you trim off things that are too thin or little pieces that are hanging on, you're gonna have a better product at the end of your cook. And for all of you who are out there spending lots of time doing your barbecue, make sure that you get yourself started on the right foot. So I really hope this helps you guys. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll try to get back to you on those. 
and I hope it helps. Good luck with your barbecue. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below, and you can also subscribe to the channel, and you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.